Hey there! Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many is excited in the Lord this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and stand all over the building. It's good to see everybody. I'm ready to see what God has in store for us this morning. I hope you are. Let's just agree together that we want the Holy Spirit. Welcome him in just to have his way and just, um, see what he has in store for us this morning. And uh, maybe while we're get started and everything uh then maybe others will start coming in but we're so glad to have you here and and those that are watching online we're so glad to have everybody participating this morning let's go to the lord in prayer this morning father we love you and we thank you so much lord for this opportunity god this blessed opportunity god to be able to be in your house god to lift up our hands to lift up our voices and to be in your presence god we are so thankful, Lord, that your word tells us where there's two or three gathered together, there you are in the midst, Lord. Join us this morning as we worship you and give you honor, Lord. God bless your people this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. How many is ready to do some praising this morning? Come on, lift your voices and lift your hands and let's do some singing together. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus.
the old gospel ship. an offering uh, opportunity right now. We got our offering plate up here on the front. If you would like to place your offering or tithe in the offer plate, but you know the other two things that we uh, have available is the cash app or mailing it in. Brother Tony does a real good job at getting that up there for you. And uh, also, I'm sure he has it scrolling on live. So those that are on live, You'd like to know those options. Maybe you don't know those options. They're on the on the screen. Let's go ahead and pray for our ties. And uh, Brother Joe, would you mind?
How many can feel him? Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. All the time. All right. Amen. How many can say that you can look back, even if it was tomorrow, you can see where God was moving or operating in your life? I don't know. I, I know that that no matter where I'm at, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what situation I'm in, I can feel his presence right there with me. And that's, you know, I was telling Sister Christy just the other day, I cannot imagine not having Christ in my life. Because when you have Christ in your life, not only do you have him, but all of a sudden a family forms. Have you all ever noticed that? When we come to Christ, we don't just come to him, we come to a family. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't want to live, live in this world without a family. And there's something about being in Christ's family. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Your 29th birthday of being saved. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's so good to be a part of that family. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and do some worshiping uh, this morning.
You are great, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah.
Yes, Jesus. Come on. Shut the mouth of lions. Shut the mouth of lions. Do what you are famous for. What you are famous for. Come on. Walk me through the water. Yes, God. Walk me through the fire. Do what you are famous for. What you are famous for. Shut the mouth of lions. Shut the mouth of lions. Do what you are famous for. What you come on, don't sing it. Come on, make way through the wall. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Do you believe in Him this morning? Come on. Do you believe in Him? I believe in You. Come on. I believe. Come on, say it with us. Come on, a voice of confirmation. I believe. I believe in, in you. Oh yes, I believe. I believe in you. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Do you believe in Him today? Amen. I said, Do we believe in Him today? Amen. That sounds so much better. Amen. It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord. It's an honor, our honor and privilege to have Brother and Sister Isom with us today and uh, understand they went just a little bit too far and had to come back. Well, we've all done that, hadn't we? <laughs> Amen. But we're honored to have them in service with us today and and uh, just a fantastic ministers and neighbors uh, live in our hometown there in Brooklyn. And their pastor needs special prayer today, and we're going to pray for him right now. And uh, I talked to him this morning by text, and uh, he was on the way to the hospital. So we need to lift him up today that God would touch him and minister to him. So let's do that right now for Brother Moore, that God would touch him. Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we know that you're greater, God, than any attack that would come up against us. Matter of fact, your word teaches us, God, that you're, you're greater. You're, you, nothing, is, nothing is in comparison to you, God. And God, you said you're, you're more than able to do, God, far and beyond what we could ask or think according to that power within us. We ask God for a healing virtue and healing power to touch Brother Moore. I pray, God, that you'd minister to him, God. I pray, God, that you would just touch him. Let him have strength, breath, God, in his body. Minister to him, not only him, but her as well. God, we rebuke the devourer off of her land. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. <clears throat> amen. Continue to lift up those that are sick. Amen. And uh, pray for them. Sister Candice can be dismissed with her children's church and uh, appreciate her so much for her dedication to um, leading our children. And um, I appreciate that more than she knows, more than, than she knows. Amen. I want to say how much I appreciate um, the guys uh, coming out and, and working Friday. Had several of the guys that were off work, and so we put them to work. And uh, I, I, will, I will have to say that uh, they put their heads down and just got the job done, and I'm, I'm so proud of that. And uh, I was contacted uh, uh, yesterday, or I was in, co in contact with the gentleman that's going to finish it out, and he said he's getting on it this week. And so that is very encouraging to me. And um, then we'll be able to open up our children's complex and begin to work on that and get it finished. And, uh, well, uh, that, uh, that would just uh, be a big blessing and help to us in the future. Amen. I want you to pray for us. And uh, we're 
We're weighing some things in a balance. We've not had Sunday school uh, in a bit, and I'm praying about going back to Sunday school and doing Sunday school. And, and so I want you to help me pray about that. I think it's something that's very important. I think it's something that is needed. And, uh, and so I, I just want you to help me to pray about that. And I didn't bring my, my phone up here today, but I think, is it next Sunday, Brother Joe? Next Sunday, next Sunday, Brother Joe and Sister Belinda open up their new church in the great metropolitan city of Bono, Arkansas. And so we're excited about them. And uh, yeah, what, what they're going to be doing for the kingdom of God. We're going to miss them here, but we're going to send part of us with them and just be a part of their ministry. And uh, um, just I'm really excited for them. I believe it's a God thing. I really do. And uh, so... Um, renew full gospel church. And, uh, so I, uh, want you to keep that in mind. He's already, he's already opened up a, a Facebook page for that. Um, <clears throat> and you can find it and he'll, he'll friend you or you can send him a friend request, however that works. But anyway, and, uh, you can see what's going on there and, uh, going to get with Brother Joe after service and see what their needs may be and see how we may be able to assist them there. But uh, we're so proud, so proud of them for that. <clears throat> I desire your prayers today. And uh, I uh, went to the doctor and uh, over this shoulder, and this shoulder has given me some kind of fits. And um, there's a process. You can't just go get nothing fixed anymore. There's a process and everything, and so we got to go through the process. And uh, I have been put on some steroids, and they make me as jittery, and uh, I lose my filter. So if I if I get a little cranky, please forgive me, okay? And uh, when I, it's funny when I was working in the daycare with my wife, and uh, I've had to do this through the years. My back, I'd had to go on these steroids, and. And uh, after about two or three days of being on these steroids, she'd go through the center. Ashley can vouch for this. She'd go through the center, and she'd tell all of our employees, please, if Mr. Marty says anything sharp to you, he's on the roids. <laughs> That's what she'd tell them. And so I, I, don't, I don't mean to. I, I think I was a, a little bit um, playing this morning with my wife. And I, I don't know why it does me that way. Uh, that's not my nature. It's not my nature. And... Um, um, but anyway, I also want to say, if you haven't done it yet, I ask you to do it. Do what we always do here. Um, open your phone. Go ahead and and uh, do whatever I used to ask you to do. That just went. Um, yes, sir. Watch party. And that opens us up to a greater uh, audience. And uh, if you're looking for me on Facebook, I went off of it through the rest of the year. I feel like we need to pray. Um, I feel like we need to focus on some different things that uh, um, is is very important. We got a very very important election coming up, and I feel like that we need to be spending some time in prayer. I'm not asking nobody to do what I did. I had other reasons for doing it, but that was my main reason. And uh, if you have not voted as of yet, I encourage you to do that. Um, vote the Bible. Amen. Vote the Bible. And uh, that's that's how I'm going to place that. And uh, and, um, you know, if they're if they're not standing up for the sanctity of life and uh, for our our churches and and uh, wanting to tax us to death, my Lord, we taxed enough, (laughs) you know, but there's other things that they're standing for. That's not that's not right in line with what the word of God says. And so I encourage you to look at the platforms of both and, and um, vote the Bible. And you can't ever go wrong by doing that. I promise you that. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a perilous times that we're living in. The Bible talked about that. He said in the last days, perilous times would come. And we're seeing those perilous times. The word perilous just means dangerous times. And it's dangerous. We're living in a in a dangerous, dangerous world, and um, and so um, I, I really encourage you to spend some time now on um, November the second. Um, we're going to be praying. We're going to be praying all night long here at the church. We're going to break it up in 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 families and 
We're going to be spending, if you can pray an hour, I need you for that hour. If you can pray two hours, I need you for two hours. If you can pray four hours, I need you for four hours. And however long you can pray, we want to make sure that we don't have any ladies in this church in the late hours of night. And so, guys, we're going to try to get us in that place. And so we're going to, we're going to spend the night in prayer, the night before the, the elections. And so... Um, so I want you to connect with me on that and help me with that. We got several that are not here. We'll get with them and let them know we've been we've already been announcing it and and uh, I'll get it to um, Tony and and uh, the the well uh, I have a pamphlet on it and I'll get it to Tony and he can get it on our website and our Facebook page and um, don't you appreciate Tony for keeping all of that stuff up to date and. Um, there's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than going to look at a church's website and it hadn't been updated in four or five years. And and um, matter of fact, the pastor's done gone and left, and somebody else is there. <clears throat> I appreciate Tony keeping a good eye on that and uh, making sure that things that have happened has been took off. What's coming has been put on, and uh, it's it's a it's a big job. And I I. I'm glad that God sent us a very capable young man that knows how to do all this. Also, all of our messages, all of our messages, several back uh, in the last little bit are being put on CD. Uh, from from here on out, they'll be put on CD. Brother Rapers, uh, if he was not here Sunday morning or Sunday night, his message has been put on DVD. And uh, if you would like those, we'll make those available to you. And um, <clears throat> and so we're gonna we're gonna do that, and we're gonna be selling those. And, and our CDs will go for five dollars, and then we'll we'll sell our DVDs for ten dollars. And this is what it's gonna go for um, through the church. Anytime you've had a church in pastor church, one of the most expensive products that takes place in this church is stuff like I'm holding in my hand here. Equipment equipment is expensive. And um, we learned through the years in different churches that I pastored that if we could sell enough of CDs and DVDs and things of that nature, we would we'd have that in stockpile and, and in reserve. If a microphone goes out, if we needed cords, if we need anything like that, we don't have to take it out of the general fund. And, um, you know, uh, as soon as we moved down here from the little church to here, um, right off the bat, I don't know if it's lightning strike or what, but... Our soundboard just just fried out, and just right off the bat was close to a thousand dollars, and so just kind of just kind of share again. Now listen to me. This is what we used to do, and I'll get into my message here in a minute. <clears throat> but this is what we used to do in other churches that we pastored. If you hear a real good message that's preached, and I don't know of any message that's not preached here that's not real good. Amen. Well, I'm glad to hear that, and uh, <clears throat> thought I was going to have to beg for that one. But um, you say, Brother Russell, I heard that message. I was there when it was preached. Well, this is what I encourage you to do. Buy that CD. Next time you stop and get gas, just take that CD out and lay it on top of a gas pump. You know what? We've done that in, in a couple cities that I pastored in, especially in the, in the city of Tuckerman. And I had people contact me from different states. Most of them were truck drivers and uh, that had pulled in to fill up their truck with diesel and they picked up that CD, and I promise you, if they pick it up, they're going to listen to it. Not all the way through, but they'll listen to some of it. And um, But through the years, I've, I've been contacted across the state from truck drivers and, and said, hey, I picked up your CD. And, uh, and what they did, when they got through listening to it, they may be in Minnesota, they may be in New York, they may be, when they got through listening to that CD, they placed it on top of another gas pump. And our message spread across the country, and we begin to see responses, and people begin to contact us about that. And so if you don't want it for yourself, this is a way of getting the gospel out. And so, um, you know, if, if something that is preached that you feel like that there's a shut-in that would be beneficial to that message, this is another way to help. And so, um, you know, this is, this is a strange day for, for pastors this is a tough day for pastors. You can't visit the hospitals. You can't visit the nursing homes. 
you know, you, you just, we just can't do what we used to do. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to get in the jail now. And, uh, and so it's, it's very tough. And so we're having to come up with unique ways of taking the gospel from the church house to the home. And, uh, and so this is what we're having to do. And so I, I just, just let us know and, uh, know that, uh, it, it takes a day. It takes a, well, it won't take a day to do a DV, I mean, a CD. It may take a day for the DVD. A CD, we can burn it. We can burn about five in just about, I don't know, a minute. And, uh, so we're going to have that available. We're also going to put a rack in a foyer. I've got some past messages I'm going to bring and put them out. And those will be, uh, masters. And you look at those message, messages, flip it over in the back. It's a, a quick summary of what that message is about, who preached it, if it's me or my dad or whoever it is, Brother Dwayne, different ministers through the years. Um, <clears throat> you take that to Brother Tony and say, I want a copy of this, and he'll he'll burn that for you, and you can take it home with you. And, uh, and we're going to be putting uh, also these out on our website and uh, – uh, our Facebook page availability. You can go on, go online and take care of those. So, man, we're putting Brother Tony to work. He he's he's almost needing a paycheck, and uh, and that's that's about the truth. Uh, it really it is, and I appreciate him so so much. And uh, um, <clears throat> I I just I just thank God for him. And all the rest of you, we're glad we're glad that you're here. And uh, pray that the blessings of God smiles upon you. Amen. If you've got your Bibles with us, with us today, I want you to go with us to the book of John. Um, <clears throat> John chapter number uh, 6. And um, I'll be ministering to you for just a few minutes. My schedule had me elsewhere this morning. But thank God for a bishop that said, Brother Russell, I've got this one covered. You don't have to go. You can go back to your church. So I told Dwayne, sit down, I'm preaching today. Amen. Really didn't work that way, but uh, I told him, I said, I'm available. He was scheduled to preach. And, and uh, so um, be in prayer. Christy is having surgery in the morning. And uh, she's got to be there at 5 or 5.30 in the morning. She's having surgery. And uh, she is very nervous about it. So be in prayer for her. Got to have her gallbladder removed. And uh, so let's pray that the peace of God and the strength of God would just be upon her. Had someone call me last night, a minister, and said, I just feel like I need to pray for Sister Christy. I don't know what's going on. He said, but I just feel like I need to pray for her. And I said, well, call her. And uh, he, he did and called me right back and said, I can't get them. And uh, her and Dwayne was on, out on a date, and she wouldn't answer the phone. And Prayer was trying to come through, and, and they was on a date, and he wouldn't answer, they wouldn't answer the phone. So I sent her a text and said, somebody's calling to pray for you. <laughs> and so uh, I think they got in contact and did. But, but anyway, we appreciate your prayers there. She's, she's pretty nervous about it, and, and should be. Everybody's nervous about it, and uh, any kind of surgery. Uh, John chapter 6, verse number 53 through 69. <clears throat> amen. Everybody there say Amen. If you're not there, say, hold on a minute. All right. John chapter 6. I also want to say that uh, we, we bought, we bought uh, Bibles for our Living Free ministry. I'm not saying you can't bring your Bible. You bring your Bible. But uh, last uh, Wednesday night, we had several different, um, comment, different um, translations. And uh, it was a little bit confusing to me. On what was being read, and so <clears throat> we bought uh, we bought some King James Version Bibles. That's going to be the Bibles that we read out of out loud. And then, if you want to bring your Bible and you want to add to it, if you want to read what your Bible says, that's okay. But uh, and these Bibles are going to be available uh, after we're done with our nine weeks and we begin our program. These Bibles will be available for Sister Jennifer to give away if someone comes into the program and don't have a Bible, uh, she'll be able to put one in their hand, and it will belong to them. And so um, we've ordered this, and I pray that we had to order a bunch more. I really do. And there's nothing, there's nothing better to give than the Word of God. 
And if we can place it in the hands of people, I think we'd be very beneficial, especially in the day that we live in. <clears throat> Verse number 53, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my life, or my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life. <clears throat> and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which come down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat, uh, not as your fathers did eat, ma uh, eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying, and who could hear it? Now, that's, that's a strong verse because of the very first words of that, verse number 60, many, therefore, of his disciples. Amen. Not many, therefore, of those in the synagogue, but the church folk had problems with what he was saying and said, this is a hard saying and who can hear it? Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it. Isn't it good to know that Jesus knows who's murmuring? This is, he said he knew that. And he said unto them, does this offend you? <clears throat> what, and if you see the son of man ascending up where he was before, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who would betray him. <clears throat> he said, therefore, said I unto you that no man can come to me except it would give it unto him of my father. Verse number 66 is another sad verse. From this time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Isn't that a sad occasion? Just because of his words, his words they said, and they become offended. Jesus talked about the offense. They got offended and they left. That's still happening in churches today. Well, I will leave that alone, <clears throat> especially while I'm taking this medicine. <laughs> then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Now, I'd already prepared this message, and I listened to President Trump last night. I'll readily tell you that I didn't agree with a lot of his language. Quickly, I'll tell you that. <clears throat> but he said something that brought my attention back to this verse. He said, I, when I had the, he calls it the China virus, or he called it the China plague. When I got, had the China plague, he said, I, had, I have the best doctors. He said, matter of fact, I have 12 of the best doctors. Immediately, my mind went to this verse, not comparing him with Jesus whatsoever. So get that understood. But immediately, my mind went here, it said that, that he, said, he said to the twelve, you know, uh, he was talking to them, <clears throat> he said, will you go also? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. The very words that he was given a while ago that offended some, Peter speaking up and said, you're speaking life. That's why we can't leave you because you have life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, 
the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? <laughs> Pretty plain, huh? And he spoke of Judas Issachar, the son of Simeon, and he was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes this morning on the statement or the question that Peter would would ask. I don't know if I even shared this with Tony. I'm sorry, Tony. Um, the question that Peter asked was, to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? And that's the question I want to leave with you today is to whom shall we go? Father, bless the word. God, I pray for anointing. The anointing is already on the word. I pray you anoint the servant reading and preaching the word. Let our hearts be lifted and our spirits be encouraged. And God, our souls be brought in check today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Before I get into this message this morning, uh, there's something else I wanted to mention tonight, 5 o'clock. We have a singing going to be here tonight at 5 o'clock. I should have done that in my earlier announcements. It just slipped my mind. Heart's Desire will be here tonight at 5 o'clock to sing for us. We've not had a singing in over a year plus, and so they're going to be here tonight. <clears throat> Amen. But I want us to look at what Peter, how Peter answered um, Jesus' question. And when Jesus, I uh, want you to notice something. He didn't throw this question to those that were walking out of the room. He threw this question to those that remained in the room. Amen. Now, he didn't, he didn't respond to those that were leaving because he already knew they were offended and they were going to leave. You remember I read that verse to you that, that said that he already knew, you know, that uh, those that was, that was going to be troubled by what he was saying, and he knew their thoughts, and he knew they were offended. So Jesus already knew that that crowd was going to leave him. I can tell you that Brother Isom's here as a pastor, Brother Joe's here as a pastor. Through the years, we can about tell you those that are going to stay with us and those that are not. And uh, we know, we, we can just feel it in, in our spirit. Amen, Brother Isom? We, we, we just, just, they're just something, and, and we, don't, we don't shun them or try to push them out the door quicker. We don't try to, to make their exit any faster. We just have a confirmation in our spirit that, this family or this couple or this individual is, is not going to be with us for a long season. And so what we do in that season, we do our best to give them life, love, and the peace of God. That's what we do. And uh, we try to love them out so in case they want to come back, we can love them back in. That's always been my philosophy. But most everyone, most everyone, including everyone in this building, has someone to whom we can go to for advice. Every one of us has someone. Amen. In times of sickness, we seek the advice of a doctor. In legal matters, we seek the advice of lawyers. But there are some things for which man just don't have the answer for. Amen. And during those times, as we begin to look a different direction, as we face eternity, we are we, with a never with a never dying soul. We have to ask ourselves the question: Where do I turn, and who do I turn to? Amen. And I have found myself more in these days in which we live in right now, seem like just not having the right answer to give. And I have found out that it's okay to say, I don't really know how to answer that, but. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll make it a matter of prayer. Give me a season. Give me a time. And I'll find, I'll try to find the direction of God for that you're asking me of. I had rather to do that than give, speak out of flesh and give them an answer that might be detrimental to their soul and to their spirit. Hello, somebody. Everything that is spoken is not of God. 
even in the pulpit and even in our churches today. And I, I, I have to say that. Now, it's hard for me to say that, but I've heard way too much stuff through the years of everybody that says they're part of this, this, this thing called uh, religion that has made me want to draw back and say, I'm not sure that was of God. <clears throat> Amen. And uh, I dare forget Brother Gary Johnson, a great Pentecostal preacher, preaches a lot of camp meetings and conventions in his younger age, and <clears throat> he's up in years now, not able to do that. But I remember he was talking about a statement that he made from the pulpit, and as soon as he said it, he said, oh, my he said, it's amazing the things you'll say under the anointing. And when his wife got home, his wife says, Honey, I'm not sure the anointing was up on you when you said that. And so sometimes, sometimes we need to kind of bridle our tongues and just be careful what we say. And everybody ought to hollow out a big amen right there because there's a good place for an amen. <clears throat> and if I got to beg for them, I will. I don't bother me a bit. Amen. But to whom shall we go? That's what Peter said. Amen. The, the same Peter, the same Peter that followed from afar, the same Peter that denied Christ, the same, same Peter that, that cursed and swore and said he didn't know who he was. Amen. And he wasn't with them, with them. Now there's a little different story. And we find this Peter saying, God, we don't know where else to go. We, you, you have life. You have the, the ability to speak life. Eternal life is in you. you you're the words that you have is eternal life. Now, I want you to get a hold of that. That's, that's, why, that's why the man that come to Jesus that said that I'm not worthy that you come underneath my roof, but if you would just speak your word. <clears throat> Hello, somebody. He said, if you would just send your word, I know, I know that your word would bring forth healing. Amen. And that's what Peter's saying. Peter's saying, I know, I know that you, what, what you say, your words, uh, your words are of eternal life. So when Jesus is speaking unto us, he's trying to speak life unto us. Even at a time that it may be a reprimand or it may be a correction or it may be a time of, of, trying to bring us and refocus us he's trying to speak life inside of us not not death not death but life amen and of course we know not everybody will receive it so i, I asked you this this question today and the question i think should be the first question that is asked in this to whom shall we go for our sins amen the the pope just come out last week and uh uh, put his approval on homosexual marriages. Amen. I, I'm just telling you the truth. And, and, uh, and so I'm asking you, to whom shall we go to our sins? And I, I wouldn't have went to the Pope to start with, but it bothers me because of his great following. He has such a great following, and that bothers me and troubles my spirit. But it also tells me that we're getting closer to the day that there's going to be a trumpet sound and we're going to all get out of here. Amen. The Bible talks about it. But we're seeing these things come to life. But I'm asking you, to whom shall we go for our sins? There's no man, there is no man, not as good as any preacher could possibly be, can save you from your sins. Amen. We can preach the word. Amen. Through the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost quickens. The Holy Ghost draws man to salvation. But it's, it's our Savior. Or it's our God that brings man from salvation to life and renews him. So we have to ask the question to everyone here and those that are watching, who are you taking your sins to? Amen. The bad problem is a lot of people don't take them to nobody. Matter of fact, we cover them up and we, we conceal them and we hide them and we carry them and we wonder why we don't have any victory. We wonder why we don't have any joy. We wonder how we don't have any happiness and we think something's, something's wrong with the church. And all the time it's because we have things inside this house that we've not brought to the Father and let the Father deal with them and help us through them. Amen. I'm, I'm kind of like the story that, that my dad talked about the Indian that went to the camp meeting service and, and on the first night, the preacher of the camp meeting, it com the Holy Ghost convicted his heart. And the Indian was convicted, but he didn't know what to do. And so he got up from his seat and he brought up to the altar and he laid his bow and arrow on the altar and said, Today, Indian gives bow and arrow to God. And he went out 
And he come back the next night. He felt the same guilt. He felt the same pulling. He felt the same drawing. Felt like nothing changed. And so he, that, that next that night, he brought something else. He brought his blanket. He he brought his headdress. He he brought different things. Until the fifth night, he had nothing else to give. And on the fifth night, Indian come laid Indian on the altar and said, "Tonight, Indian gives Indian to God." And he left they're a different man amen and let me tell you something here god can use your talents but god don't want your talents unless you're first ready to give him your sins if you give god your sins then god can multiply and add to your talents something called anointing and talents that is gifted with anointing can do more in in just a short second than anybody gifted without the anointing can do in a lifetime amen is anybody here what the preacher's saying today so god's god needs us to bring Bring our sins to him. And I'm preaching to the church, and I'm not I'm, I'm preaching to myself. So we gotta ask the question: what what do we do? What who do we bring these to? Shall shall we go to 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 some some outstanding man of wealth? That's what people are wanting to do. They're want they're wanting to buy their way out of out of their sins. They want to, if I could only start church and give in a large amount, but but we, we found out that uh, that Psalms 49 and seven said none of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him he said none of them can do that amen there's only one way to salvation and that's through Jesus Christ amen shall we go to some modernistic positive thinking preacher and dear Lord we know that we have multitudes of those in our world today amen shall shall we go to someone like that the book of Proverbs 28 and 13 said he that covereth his sin shall not prosper but he that confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy amen I'm hoping somebody's hearing me this morning amen we're trying to take our sins to everything and everybody else that can't help us amen and so we got to bring them to the right source amen shall we go to an earthly priest I just told you about the priest shall we go to the earthly priest and confess them in first Timothy 2 and 5 said for there is one God and one mediator between God and man and that is the man Jesus Christ hear me now no confessional booth is going to get you right with God amen now you can confess your sins all day long to a man and you're going to walk away with just somebody else knowing what you did in the secret but can I tell you you can kneel at an old fashioned altar and spill your guts before a, 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 a mighty power for God and not only will he redeem you but he'll take your sins that you just gave him and he'll cast him into a place to never be seen no more isn't that wonderful that we have a God that is that way amen as long as we're bringing our sins to God God can do something with us and help us in many ways but until we realize that it's only God it's only God that is able to do that amen then we'll we'll get to the place that we need to be amen shall we go to Calvary to Christ who said come unto me he said come unto me and in Matthew 11 28 through 30 come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden I'll give you rest take my yoke upon me and learn of me for I am meek and lonely in heart and you shall find rest for your soul and my yoke is easy and my burden is light listen to me here he met he's made a way he's opened up a door he's given us access you remember that that happened and it took place place even with that veil that temple was tore from the top to the bottom not from the bottom to top so somebody would say that man had done it but it was torn from top to the bottom to show that God himself made an access now we can come boldly before the throne room of God and bring our sins to him and confess from him I'm going to tell you something church until the church gets right we'll never be able to reach the world I think it's time the church gets itself in the place that she needs to be then we can reach the world and see salvation come to those that are lost. It is a fact, he man, that Jesus died for our sins. Listen to me, it's not a fable, it's a fact. It's a fact that Jesus died for our sins. You, you got to get a hold of that. He died for our sins. He died for them. Why would we not bring someone that, that he died for? Let's think about it. He died for, he said, while we were yet 
sinners. Christ died for our sins. Amen. He went to the cross, taking those to the cross. Amen. Isaiah 53 and 6, he says, and we like sheep have all gone astray. We've turned every one to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him, talking about Christ, the iniquity of us all. Peter asked the question that I'm asking you today, to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? Where can we go with this? Where can we go with the sins that we have in our life? The only answer I can give you that's best than, than any other answer of that, I've, that, that I've give you of the, of the secular answers uh, is to Jesus Christ Himself. Amen. Acts 4 and 12 said, neither is there salvation and any other. Get a hold of that. Amen. Not in some Muslim belief, not in some atheist belief, not in some charismatic off the wall belief. Amen. There is no salvation in any other other than Jesus Christ himself. Amen. You got to get a hold of that. Amen. For there is no other name under heaven given among man whereby we must be saved. Amen. You can lay your hand on the Torah all day long. It won't save your soul. Amen. Are you with me? I'm even to the point to tell you this. You can lay your hand on the Word of God, but if you're not willing to believe what the Word of God says and put it in your heart and confess your sins before the Father by you just laying your hand on the Bible, it's not going to help you a bit. Carrying a Bible under your arm, trying to make yourself look Look holy and righteous to those around you. It's not helping you a bit until you open yourself up and eat that word and get that word on the inside of you that that word comes alive. That's what the psalmist David said. I have hid his word inside of my heart that I sin not against God. Amen. I'm feeling something I didn't think I was going to feel right here this early. Amen. But I'm telling you, if you'll get the word of God inside of you, the Holy Ghost will quicken you. He will guide you and direct Direct you and help you in all your ways. He said in 1 Corinthians 15 and 3, I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. In other words, it's been founded, it's been documented, it's been it's been fact. It's a fact. Amen. Amen. Can I say it? It's a fact, Jack. It's, it's, it's documented. And, and, uh, I was asked a question the other day. Is this, is this, is this that's been done? Is it, is it, um, I forget the word they use now, but is, is, is there proof to the, to the pudding, though, saying? Is there proof to what's being said? I said, absolutely there he is. And I'm come to tell you that everything I'm preaching to you, I got proof for it. I got proof for it. Amen. If you'll take it, it'll help you. So I ask you these questions. To whom shall we go with our sins? And then I want to ask you this question this morning. To whom shall we go for our peace, for our inward peace? Anybody want inward peace inside of you? Boy, I need some inward peace. Hello? I need some inward peace. I like to lay on my bed at night and be able to go off to sleep and know that God's got everything in his control. Anybody else? I don't like to flip and toss and turn and tear the covers off the bed and pull them up off my feet. And you know what I'm saying? Restless and can't get peace and can't get comfort. And you know, I, to whom shall we go for that? Amen. Can I tell you the sinner has no peace to be found in the pleasures of sin. There's no peace. Out, I'm telling you something. There's no peace in the pleasures of sin. It might be a little bit of a, a, a fun trip in the beginning of it. But when you get alone and you begin to come off of that a high and that drunk drunkenness begins to go away, you're right back to the reality that you have no peace, and the only real peace that you'll ever find is in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 57, 20 and 21, it says it this way, the wicked are like a troubled sea. Hello? Have you ever stood and looked at a troubled sea? Amen. A few years ago, my wife and I were privileged to take a cruise, and, and we went out on a cruise, and, and one night out there on that old big ship and that big ocean, and, and that thing began to rock and roll. I'm talking about that thing was tossing to and fro. Amen. And, and uh, my brother and his wife was in the room right next to us, and, and my wife and I, we just, we just kind of just, I got up and tried to look out the door. We had a balcony room, and I tried to push the door open, and the wind shut it back in my face, and that that spray off of that big old ship was just coming in that door. So I just crawled back in bed. What else am I going to do? 
Hello? What else am I going to do? And anyway, the next morning, my brother, we went down for breakfast. He, he said, Ooh, whoa, did you feel that storm last night? And I said, well, I, I felt the boat rocking and rolling and turning a little bit. And he said, my goodness. He said, I got up and I got completely dressed. And he said, I, I got everything. And I said, oh, why, what in the world? He said, buddy, they ain't going to find me in those waters without my clothes on. He said, he said, I feel like if this thing's going down, I'm going to go down dressed. And, and I said, well, I wasn't planning on going down. I thought I took it to the master and he, man, but I thought that was very humorous and that, but we would rock to and fro. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about that the wicked are in like a troubled sea. Has everybody seen the troubled sea? Can I tell you something? A troubled sea will bring everything that's out there in here. Amen. A troubled sea will bring. You can walk on the shores, and we we had the privilege of doing that, walking on the shores, and it was pristine and clean and beautiful and, and just crystal and all that. The next day, I never in my life seen like the rubbish. I never in my life seen like the de debris that the storm blowed in. The storm will blow in stuff in your life that you thought you had covered. It's going to blow it up somewhere. It's going to surface. It's going to come to shore. You can count on that. But he said the, the, the wicked are like a troubled sea when it cannot rest. Whose waters cast up. Look at here. Mire and dirt. Amen. It'll resurface. Hello, it's going to resurface until you get clean, until you get right, until you bring it to the Father, until you lay it all at the Master's feet, until you empty yourself out. It's going to come back up, mire and dirt. There's no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Amen. There's no peace for the wicked. Amen. You can't buy it. You can't have enough stuff. You can't have enough of possessions. You can't, you can't do it. Amen. You got to have Jesus Christ in your life. True peace is to be found only in Jesus Christ. I got to say it again. True peace can only be found in Jesus Christ. True peace, say it with me. True peace can only be found in Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is none, my friend. He manned. Uh, he said in first, he said in John 14 and 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither be you afraid. Amen. I'm glad I found the great peacemaker. I'm glad I found the one who's able to calm the troubled storms in my life. I'm glad I found the one that's able to, to stand on the bow of that old boat and say peace to the storm. And it has to subside. And it has to sit down. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He is the peacemaker. And you need that peacemaker in your life. Life today, there's no peace because of possible. There is no peace that there. This peace became possible at a great price. If I can read my own typing, this peace became possible at a great price. It cost something. My dad taught me something growing up, and and he he spoke these words into me many many times, and he taught me something. I didn't understand it, and I, I tried to pass it down to my kids, but he taught me this. He says, "Son." He and, um, there's lessons, there's lessons taught and there's lessons bought. And I, I thought that, well, I don't, I don't understand that. And he said, there's lessons that taught. He said, you just learned the lesson in that. He said, but if it costs you something, if it costs you some restless nights or it costs you some trouble that you had to work through, if it costs you some expense, if it costs you something of that name, you had to put something out. He said, then that was a, that was a lesson bought. Amen. So I've bought a few lessons in my life. Can I get some amens on that? I've been taught a lot of lessons, but I probably bought more than I've been taught. So I have, I have put some things in. Amen. But this, this piece that, that we have in our heart in Jesus Christ, I didn't have to buy. It was purchased for me. Hello? It was already purchased. I just had to come get it. Amen. It's like grandkids showing up at Grandma and Grandpa's house on Christmas Day. Amen. They know without a doubt that Grandma and Grandpa's got them something. Amen. Got them something. Amen. Aubrey told me the other day, and, and she's in Children's Church, and she told me, she said, Grandpa, you know what I want for Christmas? I said, I don't know what you want for Christmas, but I know, I know Aubrey because she's like that and right back there that I raised. And amen. And she wants, she wants elaborate and expensive things. God God bless y'all. Amen. But uh, she said, I, I want a I want a pair of tennis shoes. And, and I don't know one thing from another. I don't know. And so I, I just asked. I asked Ashley, I think, or somebody, I, I'm Karen. I asked her, I said, 
what is these shoes that she wants? And she says, they're $150. Amen. And I said, oh, wow. I said, okay, Aubrey, I'll tell you what, we'll buy you those shoes for Christmas. She said, oh, you will? And I said, yeah, you get one shoe for Christmas, and then when your birthday comes around, you'll get the other shoe. How about that? Amen. I said, if you're real, real good, we'll, we'll put shoe strings in it for you. If you're not good, we'll give you shoe strings later on down the line. She said, that ain't right, Papa. That just ain't right. And amen. But, but, try, but, uh, I don't know what we'll get it for Christmas, but, uh, but anyway, I'm going to tell you, there's some things that's a great price. It costs, it costs something. It costs something. Amen. And it says in the book of Colossians 1 and 20, and having made peace through the blood of the cross. Come on, somebody. And made peace through the blood of the cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Amen. So this peace that you and I have, or the peace that you're looking for, even out in the world can only be found in Jesus Christ but I'm here to tell you you can't buy it it's already been bought all you got to do is come get it empty yourself at the foot of the cross and when you get up you got something that you didn't have to pay for amen you didn't have to buy it amen it's already been purchased for you so to whom shall we go for great peace we can only go to him amen those song comes to my mind the only real peace that I have is in you Lord can I tell you, it's also so easy to receive. But how come so many people won't get it? Amen. It's so easy to receive. Amen. It's such a wonderful experience. Uh, amen. And I tell you, I know why. I know why people don't want to give up. They don't want to let go. They don't want to let loose. They don't want to re release themselves. They don't want to let loose of the things of the world. They don't want to detach themselves from things that's held them for so long. And, and so they try to hang on to that and they bring it to, to the, I remember back, back years and years ago. And Brother Isle remembers this, I'm sure, back years ago. And I've seen it happen. I've had, seen it happen a few times under my ministry that people would jump up out of their seat and they'd bring their cigarettes and they'd put them on the altar. Amen. And sometimes I've been in revivals with my dad where they'd bring alcohol alcohol and put them on the altar. I was pastoring a church in Tuckerman, Arkansas. A guy called me and he said, he said, I've got almost 300 dirty magazines. He said, I'm bringing them to me. I said, don't bring them to me. Don't bring one to me. I don't want them. He said, what do I need to do? I need to get rid of them. I said, I'll tell you what, I got a good burning barrel out behind the building. I'll bring that thing out and I'll call some people together and we're going to rejoice with you as you start throwing those things in the fire, as you get yourself delivered delivered from that bondage and that snare of sin and he brought those and began to throw them things in the fire and we had a Holy Ghost meeting out there around that burning barrel that night as he just freed himself from the snares of the devil I'm going to tell you that's why it's easy to get but people don't want to do that kind of stuff they don't want to lay it down they don't want to throw it down at the feet of Jesus they want to just say okay I got God but I want to keep this in my front pocket I got God but I want to keep this hidden under the, in the bottom of the closet in my bedroom I I got God. Not it don't work that way, buddy. It just don't work that way. You got to let loose of the world to get a hold of God. You got to let loose of some things to get to get the peace that you need inside of your heart. Amen. It's time to let some things go and run to Calvary and say, God, I can only be delivered. I can only be set free by the power and the blood of the Lamb. Amen. I need it, and it's so easy. It's so easy. But we, for some reason, this becomes so hard to people. He said in Romans 8 and 1, most of y'all can, can quote it without me reading it. He said, there's no condemnation. There is therefore no condemnation to them that are which Christ, are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. So can I tell you, you're not, you're not, you're not relinquishing things and not have something back. You start in a brand new journey. And really, you're not start living until you start living for Jesus. Amen. But when you relinquish things and begin to serve Him, then you, you got something in, buddy. To whom? To whom shall we go? To whom shall we go for assurance and security in this world that we live in today? To whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? 
we had we had Brother Rayford here with us Sunday, and then now I asked him. I said, Brother Rayford, do you not do you not have security that normally travels with you? And he said, Well, normally I depend on somebody in the church to be my security. He's usually there's somebody in the church that has a concealed carry or something. And he said, I, I depend on that. And uh, he said, I, I forgot to mention that to you. He man, he said, but but I'm just dependent on the church. And uh, and he looked at me and he said, So I guess that's you. <clears throat> I said, well, I appreciate the load. I appreciate that. I appreciate that load that you just throw it on my shoulders, my friend. Amen. No, it was okay. Amen. But um, in that in that service, in that service, I got that that night service. I got a little bit nervous. A gentleman come in I never seen before. I don't know who he was, but he come in. He sit on the very back seat. He man, he 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 looked a little bit just you know just a little rough around the edges. And I understand now he's a good guy. Amen. But I didn't know him. I didn't know him. And so when he come in and sat down in the back seat and he kept taking his hand and reaching it in his coat. And I thought, oh my goodness, what have we got here? Because Brother Raper has, has death threats against him and, and different things against his family and different things. And so I moved myself from the front seat. I moved, made Tony move over. I sat in that seat where I had my peripheral vision on that man through the service. And I was very nervous. I was very anxious through the service until I heard heard that man start saying amen preach it brother hallelujah and i begin to feel something there that i didn't feel earlier i made a i made a sight perception i made a when i look back i didn't recognize him I, I made something bigger than it was but when he began to speak those things i began to have peace and i was able to to reholster and say it's okay now and i, I was able to move on and i, I talked to brother raper after service i said i'm sorry i i got up in the service and moved to the back and, and I said, I, I didn't know this gentleman. He said, I had to admit to you, he made me nervous too. And he said, I know why you moved, and I appreciate that. And I said, well, everything is good, and, and he is a tremendous guy. We just made a wrong judgment. Good thing I didn't pull no triggers. Amen. Wouldn't go on to. Wouldn't go on to. But, uh, but I'm just telling you, there's a place that we can go and we can have true peace. We gotta have assurance and security. We can live in a chaotic world and have assurance and security in our souls. Amen. Listen to me. We're living in a chaotic world where there's anarchy in the street and chaos in the street. And there's going to be even more, friend, before this thing is said and done. Amen. They're talking about even coming to Cerber, the Cerber, how do you say that word? Serbin, Serbin, the suburbs, yes, yet, amen, areas of our towns and, and, and causing havoc and chaos and, and they're, they're talking about, uh, if you support Trump, that your name is going to be submitted and, and I'm going to tell you, we're living in, in terrible days, but I can tell you, I can lay my head on my pillow at night to know that the God that's above everything is able to bring peace and assurance to my soul. Amen. Let me tell you, I got, I got that assurance in my spirit. Amen. To whom? shall we go for that? Amen. Can I tell you, it's not to our own opinion alone. You can't, you can't just base it upon your own opinion. I just told you my story about Sunday night. You can't base it upon your own opinion. So who do, who do I go for my, my assurance and my security? The Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 12, there's a way which seemeth right to man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Amen. So we can't go with our own opinions or our own thoughts. And, and I've had people tell me, I thought I was doing right. I thought I was doing right, but God quickened me and God convicted me. And, and I realized I've been doing some things that's not pleasing to God. And I need to make this right, preacher. I need to make this right. I need to let loose of some things. I've said some things I shouldn't have said. I've done some things I shouldn't have done. You know what happened? They got beyond their own opinion. They got beyond, I'm okay. We look in the mirror every morning and say, okay, I'm okay. But when we look in the mirror of the Word of God, sometimes the Word of God shows us in areas that we're not okay. And when we begin we begin to match ourselves up to the word of God. I find myself more times than once saying, Oh no, God, I need help. I'm like Isaiah saying, Oh God, here I am. <laughs> Amen. God, I need you. Woe is me, for I am undone. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You can't go by your own opinion. We justify ourselves in our own eyes. And don't line up. You don't line up. So, it's not that way. To whom shall we go for assurance and security? Not to some religious pretender. 
Hello? Boy, God don't get me in trouble. But there's a bunch of religious pretenders. Huh? Boy, I'm telling you, since I took this presbyter position, I found out there's a lot of people that claim to be Christian that all of a sudden showed that they weren't too very Christian at all. Hello? You can say you're Christian all day long, but your fruit will tell on you. And I've been seeing some fruit that's not been real pleasant. But that's okay. God's in control. So we can't, we can't lean on some religious pretender. Amen. For this assurance and security. I'm going to tell you something. I believe, I believe, and you got your own opinion, and that's, you know, Dad also taught me that. Opinions are like noses. Everybody's got one. Until I met a young man the other day that didn't have one. <clears throat> but anyway, everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got an opinion. But, but can I tell you, um, we, we got to go beyond our opinion. And, and so we got to, we got to get beyond that. I just think I'm okay. Or, and we can't, we can't stand in a, in a place of, of judgment spirit. Am I making sense? Um, everybody's got their own opinion. And everybody's got their own feeling about different things. But, folk, if my opinion don't line up with this book, I'm wrong. They know ifs, ands, buts about it. I, I'm wrong. If your opinions don't line up to the, this book, you're wrong. That's just the way it is. And, and we don't like to be told that we're wrong. Back out to the old woodshed and most of this young generation don't have a clue what that's about. But, but sometime we need God to take us, take us back and just do a little discipline to us because our opinions has got us going down roads we shouldn't be going on. And, 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 and people, people tell us all the time that the, the man, the man, I don't know how we got blamed for this, but the man will not stop and ask for directions for nothing. I don't, I don't, I don't like to be lost. I'll be the first to stop and, uh, oh, I promise you that. I'll be the first to stop and ask for directions. I've already found out you can't depend on Siri. Hey Amen. We was trying to come back from Branson, Missouri. We was in Branson, and, and while in Branson, we had a wreck and and uh, tore my truck all up. I rear-ended a person on that strip and uh, knocked him into another car and threw my wife in the floorboard. That was a sight to see. Hey Amen. And uh, but uh, she still won't wear a seatbelt today. You thought that would tell her a lesson, wouldn't you? Oh, it takes a lot to teach her. Hey Amen. Anyway, but. Uh, Anyway, we had to rent a car to come home, and we were in this. This is funny. Now I'm three. And I'm not now, but I was three hundred plus pounds, and and you know, and so here we are, and we only car we could get was a little one of those little mini Cooper deals, and here we are scrunched up in this little car, shoulder to shoulder. I'm talking about there ain't no room. I mean, you you get to know each other real close. I mean, we had a close, we had a real close experience on our way home from Branson. But I, I punched in. I punched in on our way home from, I wanted to go a different route. So I punched in. And I'm going to tell you, we got lost. We got in no man's land. I was, I was thinking we was going to start hearing fiddle playing or banjo playing or something. I'm talking about we, we were lost. And that Siri began to say, next opportunity, make an illegal U-turn. And I thought, what's a legal U-turn? There's not a such a thing. You tell that police officer when he pulls you over, Siri just told me that I could make a legal U-turn. So you can't put your opinion on a lot of things like that. I finally had to turn Siri off and stop at a restaurant, go in that restaurant and say, look, I'm trying to get back to Jonesboro, Arkansas, and I'm messed up. I, I am so confused. I'm like a termite in a yo-yo. I don't know where I'm at. I don't know where I'm at. And they, they, they done what he done. They, they said, Oh my goodness, you are lost. You got to get back out here. And I said, Hang on. And I had to give me a piece of paper and I wrote it down. And, uh, I went by that direction and it brought us home. But I was leaning on the opinion of something else and it took me down another path. You can't base your religion or your sanctification or your Christian life on opinion. A lot of people's got opinion that they're going to heaven and they're going to bust hell wide open. 
Hello? You hear me? He meant, I don't mean that mean. I don't mean that mean. And that, you know, that's just the truth of the matter. You got to, your opinions got to line up with the book. If the book says it's different, then you got to change your opinion. You got to change. Matter of fact, it talks about uh, our righteousness and sanctification is a complete turning around. Amen. It's a complete turning around. That's its description. That's its description. Our righteousness, us getting saved and delivered is a complete 180 turning around and going a different direction. Amen. So sometimes we got to throw our opinions in the garbage and say, God, I'm going to have to lean back on you. I'm going to have to trust in you. I'm going to have to confide in you. I got to put my confidence in you. I got to hurry. Amen. But we can't, we can't not depend on some religious pretender to get us from point A to point B. Amen. If something don't sound right, go home, get your Bible, look it up for yourself. If it don't line up with the Word of God, then you found out you probably don't need to ask their opinion no more. But why do we keep going back to them again? Amen. I got a 77-pound bulldog in my backyard. He's a gentle giant. Unless he don't know you, and you try to go in my garage. And I'm telling you, when you do that, he all of a sudden forgets that he's a gentle giant. And he becomes vicious. My neighbor across the street, good friend of mine, wanted to borrow tools. And we loaned tools back and forth. I just We just had his sheetrock equipment helping hang sheetrock. Thank you, Brad, if you're watching. That helped us a bunch. But he wanted to, some tools, and I told him to go over to the garage and get it. I said, go on. I said, go over to the garage and get it. So he went over to get it, and he was met by a vicious, angry dog that wouldn't let him in the gate. And he called me, and he said, I didn't think that dog was vicious. I said, I didn't know he was. He said, well, he wouldn't let me in the gate. Pastor Moore, come over. Pastor Moore standing in the driveway and said, that's a beautiful dog. And I said, thank you. We, we're proud of him most of the time. And uh, he said, will he bite? I said, no, he won't bite. <sighs> I said, he won't, he's just a big old baby. And I'm standing there with Pastor Moore. Pastor Moore walks over there and gets about from here to that altar. And that dog hits that gate and them teeth are, and he's carrying on. And Pastor Moore turned around to me and said, you lied to me. I said, I didn't mean to. I didn't know he would do that. That was the first experience. The second, the first one I told you was the second experience. Amen. Can I tell you something now? Now I know. Now I know. Now if somebody says I'm going to need to get something, I, I first thing I, I told Austin the other day, Austin said, can I come to the house and work on my truck? I said, Rocky's in the backyard. Now he knows Rocky. He probably didn't bother, bother. Rocky knows him, so he probably didn't bother him, but I wanted him to know. Another reason I want him to know, don't let him out. <laughs> Amen. Don't let him out. Because he starts looking for a fight. That's lock, lock, well, anyway. Anyway, let's go on. So we can't go to some pretender. The steroids was about to come out, and I caught them. I don't know how long it'll last. But anyway, Second John 1 and 7, For many deceivers have entered into the world. Listen to me. Many deceivers have entered into the world. Many deceivers have entered into the world. I go on farther. Many deceivers have entered into the church. Hello? Many deceivers have entered unto the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Matter of fact, when Oprah, Oprah Winfrey can stand on her stage and say, there's other ways. There's other ways to salvation. When Joel Osteen will stand on his great large stage to his thousands of congregation and will not say that Jesus Christ is the only way when he's asked the question, he will not answer it and said there's probably more ways. I'm going to tell you, there ain't no probably about it. There ain't no doubt about it. Oprah Winfrey, you're wrong. Amen. The only way to salvation is through Jesus Christ. There ain't no other road. There ain't many roads. There's not many ways. There's only one way that leads to salvation. Amen. He said, but many deceivers are going to come in the world and many deceivers are going to come in the flesh and they're going to, this is a deceiver and an antichrist. You hear me? An antichrist. Anti, be against Christ. Amen. Now there is going to be an antichrist that's going to arrive. Amen. We're about to get to that day. The church is going to get out of here but there's going to come an antichrist 
Amen. And he's going to speak peace and they're going to be deceived. But can I tell you, there's antichrist movements moving in our land right now in which we live in. And Tifa ain't of God. You can say what you want to do. I believe in black lives. Listen to me. I believe in black lives. I support my brother of color. But I do not stand for that group called Black Lives Matter. It's a, it's a hate group. He man that has risen up and caused some problems in the land. And this probably will get me some remarks on my Facebook. But that's all right. I know how to do the delete button. He man. But I'll come by to let you know there's going to be a movement in our land that's going to come up. And many are going to be deceived. He man. But can I tell you, we can go to Christ Jesus for assurance and security. I stand upon a solid rock. I stand upon a solid foundation. Let the winds blow. Let the let the storm come. It's like the man that dug down deep and found the rock and built his house upon it. Amen. I'm telling you, folk, there's a storm coming. You better be ready. There's a storm coming. But if you're established in Jesus Christ, let it come. Amen. We can have assurance and confidence to know that when the storm is passed by, amen, we can hold our head up and know that he held our hand all the way through. All the way through. He held our hand. Amen. There's many deceivers going to come. But we can go to Christ for assurance and security. I like John 10, 27 through 29. He, I like the way he starts it. He says, my sheep hear my voice. Hello? My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. Hello? I know them. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. This beautiful young lady sitting back here by this ugly guy. I mean, this, this guy. No, he's a very handsome young man. <clears throat> this beautiful young lady back here called me about 5.30 one morning. Screaming. And I'm going to tell you something, boy. I had to do something to a daddy. You, 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 dad, you, if you're daddy, you know what I'm talking about. There's something that rises up in you. Somebody's hurting your kid. I, I didn't have a prayer meeting. I'm sorry. I might ought to, but I didn't have a prayer meeting. I just got dressed probably quicker than I've ever got dressed, and I jumped in my truck, and I broke all the laws of the land, plus some, trying to get to my baby that was crying out for help. You hear me? But can I tell you, I know her voice. And can I tell you, my father knows my voice. And when I cry out for help, he dispatches help. You hear me? He dispatches help. Hallelujah. And they come on the scene. Amen. Matter of fact, if you're not Holy Ghost filled, that's why you need to be Holy Ghost filled. Because one of his jobs is to be your helper. Amen. To be your helper. He was told about R.W. Shambach. And R.W. Shambach was praying over this man that was demonic. And he prayed over him for some time. And nothing was happening. All of a sudden, R.W. Shambach said, Devil, my big brother Jesus defeated you 2,000 years ago. And that demon screamed out. That man and said, No, don't say that. R.W. Shambach said, I said, aha, I got you now. He said, so I just kept saying it. My big brother Jesus defeated you. Well, we could learn something from that, my friend. Amen. Can I tell you what did Jesus use on the devil when he was upon the mountain? When the devil come to tempt him, he took this word of God and he fought with this word of God. Amen. That's why we need to know the word of God that we can make it a battering ram or a tool, a weapon, whatever we need to, to force away the, the enemy's attack. Now let me let me hurry. I gotta I gotta quit this. But he said, My sheep know my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep know my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that wonderful? He said, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Then neither shall any man pluck them out of the hand. Uh, out of my hand, uh, that scripture has been taken out of context. Amen. He's right. He's right. You can remove yourself. You can remove yourself. 
Amen. But no man shall pluck them out of my, my father's hand. And I'm good to know that I'm in good hands. Can somebody say a big amen? When you're in the hands of God, you're in good hands. Amen. I'm going to page three. It's just about four verses, so don't, don't panic. It's my, my last one. Amen. To whom shall we go when life's days are closing? To whom shall we go? To whom shall I thank God for deathbed repentance? I don't encourage it. But I thank God for it. That's a wonderful God that you've lived like a rebel and not wanted to live for him. Now you're laying on your deathbed. But you can cry out to him, and he makes you a son. Amen. You remember the thief hanging on the cross? One reviled against him. Mockery. The other one just said, remember me when you go into your kingdom. Jesus didn't answer this one, but he answered this one and said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. I thank God for it, but let me tell you, I don't really recommend it. Not everybody's going to have that opportunity and privilege. While you have a chance now, live for Jesus. Live for Jesus like this was your last day. Amen. Some, some, uh, some country songwriter says, I'm living like I'm dying. He wrote a song, I'm living like I'm dying. Well, folk, I'm telling you something. Every day, in some way or another, we're dying off a little bit more. The older I get, the more I die off in some ways or another. Amen. I can't remember like I used to remember. I can't do things I used to do. I'm not able, I'm not able to grab a 12 foot sheet, a sheet rock and put it underneath my arm like that boulder of a boy back there can do. Amen. When he shows up, I said, the muscles in the house. Amen. I'm glad he's here. I can't do that no more. Now I can't do the things that I used to do. I, I had to learn that. I had to accept that. After three back surgeries and a back full of metal, I have to come to the conclusion that I'm not able to do some things that I didn't I used to be able to do. So a little bit of me dies every day. I'm not saying I'm dying tomorrow. I'm not I don't know. I could be. I might drop dead before I leave this service today. Death and life's in the hand of the Father. It has not up to me. What I got to do is just make sure that I'm ready when He's ready. You hear me? You got to make sure that you're ready when he's ready because he's not going to go by your time schedule, your time plan, your agenda. I've got this mapped out for the next 10 years. God said that don't line up with my book. Amen. Can I tell you early babies? Sometimes we got, we got, we got infants. Uh, me and my wife and our daughters have got babies shouting the streets of glory today that we can't wait to see one these days and we're going to be reunited with them one these days. Amen. Can I tell you? Amen. I've seen them live up to 80 and 90. 90 and 100 years old. I don't know where we land in between that. We're not given that long. Amen. But can I tell you, somewhere along the way, there's going to be a closing of the day, and it just pays to be ready. So to whom do we go to make ourselves prepared for the closing of the day? A man can stand above me and say what he wants to say all day long, but what matters is where I was when I breathed my last breath. Okay, amen. I've preached a lot of funerals in my 33 years of pastoring, and I've preached a lot that I didn't have the assurance. I didn't know, but I didn't have the assurance that their hearts was right with God. And I did not even bother to try to preach them into heaven because I didn't know. You hear me? Family would like for me to done that. Family would be saying real quickly, oh, they're in heaven now. Uh, yeah. God needed another angel. You don't become an angel when you die. That drives me crazy. God don't need no more angels. Anyway, don't get me off on that. To whom shall we go when life's days ends? This depends entirely upon our decision for or against Christ. If we accept Him, we can rest upon Him. Psalms 23 and 4 say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. If we reject him, we can be sure of an eternal burning hell. You choose your destiny. You choose it. Brother Russell, I just can't believe God would send anybody to a burning hell. You're sending yourself, my friend. Hello, God's given you a way out. 
God's given you a way out. If it's building caught on fire and Brother Lucas run back there and jerk those double doors open and said, this is the way out, this is the way out, and you're piddling around saying, I've got to get this paper picked up off the floor. When it's all said and done, you're going to be responsible for your own death because everybody else got out. But you was too busy caught up in what you thought was more important. Well, that's real good preaching right there. <clears throat> Amen, preacher. That's good preaching. Keep on preaching. Okay, I think I will. If we reject him, we can be sure of an eternal burning hell. This is my last scripture. Matthew 7, 21, 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in your name. Listen to me. Many will say, many will say, we have prophesied in your name. In your name we cast out devils. And in thy name we done many wonderful works. That's what they're saying. Then he's going to say something. To them. Hello? They laid out their plan, their thoughts. This is what we've done. Then he's going to say, then I'll profess unto them, I don't know you. I don't know you. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Hello? So we got to live like we're dying. Because we are. We're in mortal flesh. Hello? Doctor looked at my hands the other day, and he said, boy, your fingers are twisting. And I put them together, and I said, yeah, they're starting to look like my dad's hands. And He said, when you go see that orthopedic surgeon on your shoulder, you might as well let him look at your hands. I said, okay. So I said, the orthopedic surgeon, he talked to me about my shoulder, and I said, my doctor said, you need to look at my hands. And So I stuck my hands out, and he said, yeah, looks like he might have the beginning of some rheumatoid arthritis. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And uh, he said, uh, this sounds real pleasant. It sounds, I mean, this, this, you're all going to want to get on this, this road and join me for this. He said, probably what we'll have to do is doing some injections in your hands. I thought, oh, wow, that don't sound like fun. But immediately my mind went to someone who had an injection in his hands. But he done it for me. He done it for me. Now, it wasn't the same thing that the doctor was talking about. He was talking about some steroid injections to keep my hands from locking up. I got what they call trigger finger. My fingers lock up. The kids think it's funny because I go, arr, arr, and I start trying to straighten them back out. I guess it is kind of humorous, but it hurts. You laugh on, it'll be put on you. I remember old Ab Sharp, and I'm, I'm closing, but I remember old Ab Sharp dead and going on to be with the Lord. Him and Sister Sharp attended church in Nettleton where my dad pastored, and my dad was living. And Brother Ab Sharp would get happy in the Lord, and he would slap his ear when he danced. Boy, he'd just slap that ear like a dog is getting scratched. Boy, he just... Dance all over that floor. Old Mayburn Fletcher, my uncle, he thought that was so funny. And he would just hee-haw, and he'd lean over on the seat, and he'd point and say, look at, boy, look at that. He'd just laugh. One night, the Holy Spirit hit him. He went to slapping his ear doing that very same thing that old brother Ab Sharp done. And I said, would you look at that? I just got a feeling the God was in heaven said, check him out, check him out. He thought it was funny. Check him out. Anyway, where shall we go? Where can we go? We can go to Jesus, friends. We can go to Jesus. I find myself going to Him more and more and more every day. I find myself more and more every day saying, God, I need your help. I need help, God. 
I need your direction. I need your wisdom. I need it. I don't know how to handle this day. Ain't no book. Pastors, there ain't no book that prepared us for this day. Except for this one. Ain't a how-to book. We're, we're, this is just a different day. i never seen a day where the churches would have to be closed and sickness would be rampant. Even though he did tell us that there was going to come a day when pestilence would run in the land and uncurable diseases. We're seeing all of these fulfilled before our eyes today and we have to ask the question, where can we go? Where can we go? It's kind of like the Russell family when they sound the tornado alarm. My Lord, here they come. <whistles> sliding in our driveways and bailing out of their cars and piling up in bathrooms and closets. And if we die, we're all going to die together. We're going home together. That's when it come through. I heard them praying, heard them confessing sins. I'm outside the door saying, get them, God, get them. Let the storm stay a little longer. One closet, one closet, and there's one of the girls that's crying, Daddy, come. Daddy, came in here. Daddy, get out of the storm. Other closet, I hear somebody in there crying, God, have mercy on me. Forgive me. And I don't know, I was torn between where do I go. I'm needed in two places. I feel like this is the best place to be. It's amazing what a storm will do to us, right? I don't say that mean. I, we was all crying out to God in some way or another. We were. We were. I walked out on my front porch and I seen that whirlwind above our head of debris right above my house. I said, God, you pick it up. You pick this thing up. Praise the Lord, He did. Not everybody was unscathed, but... God had mercy on our family. And I'm glad that He did. But I asked you the question, where are you going to go? Where are you going to go for help? Where are you going to go for strength? Where are you going to go for peace? Where are you going to go for your sins? That should have been the first question. And then where are you going to go at the end of the dying day? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? You're not going to be laid out there in that ground. That's just a shell. You're going somewhere. All of us is on a journey. We're going somewhere. This is not it. I had a Jehovah Witness tell me that one time. said, there is no heaven. There is no hell. This is hell on earth. And this is heaven on earth. I said, maybe for you, my brother. But my book said there's coming a new heaven and a new earth. All this is going to be destroyed. You can have it. Hello? But where are you going? Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Where can we go? Where can you go in the midnight hour when you need to talk, and, but you don't want to wake up your spouse? Where do you go when you're... Finances are in trouble and you don't know what to do. And Where do you go when you're sick and your body aches and you seem like you just can't get well? I found out that I can take everything that I got. I can put anything in there and I can take every bit of it to the Father. And say, Father, this is bigger than me. And I've been doing that a whole lot lately. I've been saying, God, this is bigger than me. I don't know how to handle this. I can't, I can't bear this alone. I need help. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So where will you go? Where will you go watching me today by Facebook? Where are you going to go? Everything you turn to ain't been working. It's time to try something new. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He'll meet you at the foot of the cross. He'll meet you. He's waiting. He's waiting. Father, I come to you today. God, I've done my best. I pray today, God, that you'd quicken our hearts. You'd challenge our lives. Right now, Holy Spirit, do what I can't do. 
Your word teaches me that you lead man to salvation. Without the drawing of the Spirit, man cannot be saved. Holy Spirit, I pray that you move in this room right here today. God, we have the impression and want to believe that everybody in the building is right with God. But God, I don't know. I don't know where people really stand. But God, you do. They may have some things that, like this young man that had that come to me and said, I needed to get rid of some stuff. Take us back to that day, God, where people would get rid of stuff and lay things down and say, i got to get clean of this. Father, there may be those that are watching today that are asking the same question, God, where, where can I go? Let them know that they can run to you and you will meet them and you'll be there for them. I ask you in this service today, if you have something that you need to lay at the feet of God today, don't leave this building carrying it. And if you lay it down, don't pick it back up. Let it lay. Let it lay. And go on with your life. One of the first things I had built when we moved to this building was altars. I will not have a church that don't have altars. I got saved in one. All my kids got saved in one. I'm watching my grandkids get saved and get filled with the Holy Ghost in them. We got to have altars. But can I tell you, outside of this church, in your own personal life, you also need to have an altar too. When you can't be in this building, you need to have a place that you can fall to. It may be beside the bed, beside the couch, in a chair. It may be walking down the road. It may be in out in the yard somewhere, driving down the road. But can I tell you, you can call out to Jesus. and He's what the world needs today. And He's what you need today. Before we walk out of this building today, I'm going to give you an opportunity if you want to bring some things to the Lord and say, God, i got some things I need to give you. I'm not going to get in your business. I'm just giving you an offer. And to you watching by Facebook, where you're at, why don't you let loose and let God? Why don't you let go and let God? Why don't you just turn around where you are and say, God, I need help? It's bigger than you. It is bigger than you. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He's waiting for you today, my friend. He's waiting for you. I think we all could take a moment and just talk to the Father for just a minute. Can we do that where you are if you want to come, just whatever you want to do? But let's just take a minute and talk to God about us. Talk about me. God, it's me. It's me. It's